Hello students, welcome to the EPG Patshala. I am Professor Richa Tanwar from the Women's Studies Research Center, Kurukshetra University. Today I am going to talk about the concept of women's studies, its definition, the need and importance of women's studies, the nature and scope of women's studies, women's studies as an academic discipline, women's studies as an interdisciplinary subject from the paper women's studies as an academic discipline. Objectives. The objectives of the module are to have a more comprehensive, critical and balanced understanding of the social reality. To explain the socio-historical, cultural, economic and political reason for women's subordination. Women's studies is arguably the most revolutionary new field of intellectual inquiry of our current age. In its simplest form, women's studies brings all of women's experiences under the scholarly microscope, subjecting it to the most advanced scientific methods available. Women are an integral part of the social setup, and any study of the society, be it a social science, humanity, pure sciences, or technical sciences, would definitely involve a basic component of women and issues concerning women. In the process, such a study is bound to raise issues that would ruffle the hitherto identified parameters and theories of the particular science. Women's studies as an interdisciplinary subject contributes to the whole of higher education with its objectives, contents and methods. Its fallout is far-reaching for the role of higher education and the university as the initiators and enablers of a critical assessment of the social structures and processes and the keeper and sharpener of the conscience of the nation. Its impact is bound to be felt beyond the university system into the wider social dynamics in bringing about a more humane, egalitarian and equal society. What is women's studies? Women's studies was born within or grew alongside the women's movement. And it began with a fruitful interaction between amateurs outside the academy and professionals within it. Outside the academics, among the general public of women, there were activists founding magazines, publishing about the women's press, and even founding their own feminist publishing houses. Women's studies is not a narrow study about women or information about women, but a critical instrument for analyzing the social reality so as to lead to the development of social sciences. The UNESCO meeting of experts on women's studies and social sciences held in Asia in October 1982 defined women's studies in terms of the objectives that such studies sought to achieve. It is the pursuit of a more comprehensive critical and balanced understanding of social reality, whose essential components include women's contribution to the social process, their struggles and aspirations, women's perception of their own lives and of the broader social reality, the understanding of the roots and structures of inequality that lead to marginalization, invisibility and exclusion of women from the scope approaches and conceptual frameworks of most intellectual inquiry and social action. Objectives of women's studies. The objectives of women's studies may be elaborated as to conscientize both men and women by helping them to understand, recognize and acknowledge the multidimensional roles played by women in society. To promote better understanding of the processes of social technological and environmental change, to contribute to the pursuit of human rights, to investigate the causes of gender disparity, analyzing the structural, cultural and attitudinal factors, and to empower women in their attempts for equality and for effective participation in all areas of society and development. To render invisible women visible, in particular the women of the underprivileged strata, to help develop alternative concepts, approaches and strategies for development. To promote the construction of a better, more balanced society. Defined thus, women's studies as an academic discipline 
has its own identity and autonomous existence. It has, over a period of time, developed its own theories based on feminist concepts and evolved its own methodology that is distinguished from the varied precepts and methodologies adopted by mainstream disciplines. As part of the critical theory, it is an instrument that questions the traditionally held premises, theoretical categories and methods in social sciences that has brought out the glaring absence of gender as a social category. In addition to class, ethnicity, color, region and caste as tools of analysis and understanding of the social reality. It has highlighted the role that patriarchy and gender bias have played historically in shaping the knowledge system. Thereby, it has questioned the well-known ideologies of conservatism, liberalism and socialism and pointed out the need to re-examine the traditional and inherited knowledge from the gender perspective. Definition of Women's Studies In a nutshell, women's studies may be defined as a body of knowledge that has grown out of a felt concern for gender equality. Rooted in feminism, women's studies seeks to explain the socio-historical, cultural, economic and political reasons for women's subordination. Additionally, it suggests measures by which these forms of discrimination may be countered. As it provides an alternative viewpoint to the existing knowledge construction, women's studies enriches the various branches of social sciences and provides a more holistic understanding of human experience in society. Women's studies is a critical instrument to examine those social processes that have so far favored men and made invisible women's contributions. The driving force behind women's studies is feminism. The difference feminism introduces into this discourse is that it shows that human experience is gendered and individuals' life experiences, choices and entitlements in the family and society are determined by the biological accident of sex. Women's studies aims at promoting gender equality by sensitizing men and women about women's rights and entitlements. The focus of this endeavor in India is the lives of poor, marginalized and dispossessed women. It goes beyond intellectual explorations of women's lives to translate its itself into action. Women's studies, therefore, is not just another academic discipline. Rather, it is an attempt to bridge the gap between the professed deals and the existing social reality by initiating social change. Concepts describing the historical situation of women. Oppression of women is the term commonly used by writers and thinkers and by feminists. The term oppression means forceful subordination and it has also been used to describe the subject condition of individuals and of groups such as in class oppression or racial oppression or caste oppression. Subordination of women has distinct advantages over oppression. Subordination does not have the connotation of evil intent on the part of the dominant group. It allows for the possibility of collusion between him, her and the subordinate. It includes the possibility of voluntary acceptance of subordinate status in exchange for protection and privilege, a condition which characterizes so much of the historical experience of women and also part of the patriarchal structure of society. Deprivation has the advantage of being objective, but it has the disadvantage of making and hiding the existence of power relations. The rationale for women's studies and its growth. In the first days of women's studies, several issues were key to laying foundations and shaping debates. The first was posed in Simone de Beauvoir's the Second Sex, in 1949, arguably the most influential book about women written in the 20th century. The Second Sex asked, what is a woman? No one the author claimed would ever ask a similar question about men, nor would anyone really be puzzled about, women's, about men's wants and desires. That was, because men were taken to be the norm, the unquestioned human type, the universal category by which all else was measured. In contrast, women were the non-norm, the opposite and the other. Women as the other lived in an unfree state 
following the dictates of nature to reproduce. The other as a concept became foundational to early women's studies and other fields such as post-colonial and cultural studies. Betty Friedan, the feminine mystique in 1963, picked up on de Beauvoir's question. It described the dwindling intelligence of women who stayed at home to be housewives and mothers. Her contention was that middle class women's IQ actually dropped over their life course in the home because it was based on interviews with her college classmates and on statistical studies done of similar women. Moreover, Frieden claimed women who should have led sparkling lives of creativity that enhanced society questioned the banality of their existence. Is this all? She found them repeatedly asking. A woman was a trapped housewife. Women's studies has its roots in the women's liberation movement of the 1960s. The 1960s was a period of widespread protests. Participating in these various civil rights movements, women gained political experience. They also realized that none of the existing systems of progressive thought, which affirmed the values of freedom, justice and equality, addressed the question of women's subordination and marginalization. The underlying assumption being Women's subordination is biological and determined by the natural order. The issues of justice, equality and liberty are the concerns of the public sphere, that is the realm of politics, economy and the military. These issues mediated the relationship of the individual or group with the state. Nevertheless, within this political discourse on the relationship of the individual with the state and society, the issues pertaining to man-woman relationships in the private sphere of the home were left out. Participation in these movements, nonetheless, enabled women to gain political experience. Women formed separate collectives and consciousness raising groups in which they explored their life cycle experiences. Gaining insights about the existing processes which denied women their rights, they began to question the accepted theories. Domestic violence, for instance, they realized, was not an individual problem or an aberration of the existing social reality, but rather an expression of the power relationship that existed between the sexes. Therefore, instances of domestic violence could no longer be dismissed as sadomasochist relationships in which women participated. For such explanations tantamounted to blaming the victim. Invariably, the reason why women could not opt out of violent relationships was because of socio-economic constraints. Increasingly, integrated within the academia in the 1970s, the roots of the discipline lie in its critique of the existing scholarship and the fundamental question it raises about the accepted theories and methodologies. As these theories failed to explain their own lives and that of other women, feminist scholars started to question the universal applicability of established theories. They pointed out that these historically accepted theories, methods and systems of explanations were biased and only offered a partial worldview as perceived by men. Women's studies, therefore, helped to complement and complete our understanding of the social reality. Committed to tolerance and non-hierarchical modes of generating knowledge, it has no set rules and procedures. It consists of a set of open-ended questions about women and society. This explains the gender diversity of theories and explanations that have developed about women's lives. Since its recognition as an academic discipline in the early 1970s, women's studies has evolved in many directions. It has helped to break many disciplinary grids, altered our understanding of the various branches of human knowledge, and questioned the universal applicability of the established theories. It talks about the gender relations framework. Specifically, it has underscored the politics of knowledge. The questions raised from the point of view of women's experiences of powerlessness makes evident that truth, as inscribed in theories, is not objective. It is not constant. It is re-scripted, modified and defined by those who have the power to assert truth. The accepted methods and techniques of data collection do not necessarily prove useful in gathering information on the lives of those who have no say in the process of generating knowledge. Thus, 
identifying issues of power as reflected and played out in the lives of women. Women's studies help to strengthen the discourse against all forms of inequality, injustice and oppression. Pointing to the gendering of human experience, women's studies questions the assumptions in the dominant construction of knowledge that there is an objective reality which could be studied by individual scholars to establish universal truths. The rationale for the growth of women's studies is premised as follows. Women have been left out of codified knowledge. This exclusion has given rise to partial, often inaccurate portrayal of women's lives by men. Both these issues require careful examination for they reveal the politics of knowledge generation. The first indicates that women's exclusion from the process of knowledge generation was deliberate and political. It was aimed at maintaining a patriarchal social order that ensured women's subordination. Other than that, women's contributions to art, literature and sciences were either appropriated by men such as husbands, brothers, fathers or even male researchers with whom they worked or allowed to die unrecognized as they contradicted the prevailing male-centric worldview. The second implies that the explanations offered about women's lives remain partial and inaccurate because women have not been part of the process of knowledge generation. Such a process was created out of a view of human nature as comprising two distinct halves and a socio-political and economic system which placed all forms of decision-making powers in the hands of men. Arrogating for themselves the power of knowledge creation, men kept women out of areas of intellectual inquiry but this does not mean that women have not been objects of study. With gender as a category of social analysis, women's studies attempts to correct the excessive androcentric tilt of the various disciplines. In the process, crude assumptions of objectivity in the generation of knowledge stand dismantled. The delineation of the ways in which power relations operate to omit women's experiences as autonomous beings is the most significant contribution made by feminism. Furthermore, by asking questions in terms of women and not in terms of a particular disciplinary framework, feminists move beyond some of the limitations imposed by compartmentalization. It lays the groundwork necessary for a more holistic and egalitarian basis of knowledge production. Feminist Perspectives on Interdisciplinarity Another characteristic feature of women's studies is that it is an interdisciplinary subject. Women's studies, women's lives cannot be split up into separate mutually exclusive halves without endangering the purpose of social research which in this case is to understand the visible and the invisible indicators that influence women's lives. It uses collective modes of production of knowledge and non-conventional sources. For instance, in trying to reconstruct women's history, one is forced to rely on non-documentary sources. And that is, because women's lives and experiences have not been discussed in the official accounts of the past. Therefore, while women's studies draws upon the existing knowledge, base and methodologies, it does not exclude the more non-conventional methods. There is also evidence that transdisciplinary feminist conceptual frameworks, terminology and generative grammars have transformed research and curriculum development in traditional disciplines. This is because women's lives and experiences have not been discussed in the official accounts of the past. Therefore, while women's studies draws upon the existing knowledge base and methodologies, it does not exclude the more non-conventional methods. There is also evidence that transdisciplinary feminist conceptual frameworks, terminology and generative grammars have transformed research and curriculum development in traditional disciplines. The insistence by pioneers of the women's studies that women's lost contributions of history and literature be recovered and that the historical and literary canons and critical schools of thought be redesigned in light of this recovery has been replicated in other fields such as art and music. These developments may add women and stir, 
but they still represent important new data points for disciplinary revision. In psychology, for example, transdisciplinary gender considerations have infused definitions of individual identity and mental health with a social analysis. From the standpoint of women's experiences, critical questions are posed to social science theories. In economics, for instance, the concept of work is questioned. This question underscores the ways in which a patriarchal society dominates and controls women's reproductive and productive labor. Further, as proper conceptual tools have not been evolved to measure women's contribution to the survival of the household, it does not get computed as work in the GDP. The various tools of data collection exclude many women from the economically active population on the assumption that women have no economic activity. In sociology, for instance, prescriptions of ideal gender relationships are treated as descriptions of the social reality. These descriptions rarely correspond with women's lived experiences. The inexplicable question is that if the aim of social sciences is to understand and faithfully depict people's lived experiences, why do these explanations about women's lives remain so far removed from reality? To give an example of the revolutionary potential of women's studies, in the reconstruction of history is by a study by Uma Chakravarti. By questioning the basis on which assumptions were made about women's high status during the Vedic period, Chakravarti discovered that it was premised on meager evidence from literary references to women as co-partners of their husbands in the performance of the Vedic sacrifices. It did not take into account important considerations such as decision-making powers, autonomy, access to and control over resources. Further, examining the underlying compulsions of such a historical construction, she underscored, as also has been done by other feminist historians, the complex interaction between the colonial discourse on India and the response of the nationalists. As many feminist scholars pointed out, Women's issues were discussed in the 19th century on a scale never seen in any of the earlier phases of Indian history. Among the reasons which triggered this social reform movement may be cited the colonial discourse on India. The colonial state and the missionaries often exaggerated accounts of sati, female infanticide and ascetic widowhood practiced among the upper class Hindus as indication of the general backwardness of India and to justify colonial rule. Introduction to Women's Studies in Indian Universities The discipline got its official sanction from the international community when based on the recommendations made at the World Conference held at Mexico in 1975, the United Nations declared 1975-85 to as the International Women's Decade and adopted a world plan of action to establish gender equality. This decision of the United Nations was backed by the various international documents on human rights, which recognized the equality of men and women. Among them may be mentioned the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948, the International Covenant of Civil and Political Rights, and the International Covenant of Economic, Social and Cultural Rights. This was coupled with the discovery of the low status of women in various parts of the world. Recognizing the negative impact of development on gender equality, the World Plan of Action called for research, investigation, documentation and analysis into those processes in society that create structures of gender inequalities. Since then, similar assertions have been made in various other conferences the most recent one being the Beijing Conference in September 1995, followed by Beijing Plus Conferences. In India, the National Committee on the Status of Women was set up in 1974 to examine the status of women in this country and their problems. The findings of the committee came out in the form of a report known as Towards Equality, Status of Women in India, 1976. It showed far beyond the most pessimistic prediction the dismal condition of women's lives. The report expressed concern for the adverse proportion of women in the population, their low life expectancy, the declining sex ratio, higher mortality rate, and the declining work participation rates. These trends were seen as contrary to the stated goals of our society 
as expressed in the Constitution of India. The report also identified the many false and mythical notions regarding women's roles and conditions that have influenced plans and policies as well as their implementation in the last few decades. The reasons attributed within the report for women's low status was both ignorance and attitudes. For example, despite the admitted heterogeneity of the Indian society, there has been a tendency to regard women's position and problems from the standpoint of the middle class, particularly the urban middle class. Instruments of change designed through legislation, executive action and communication tended to ignore the differences among women and also the contradictory impact of the process of development on their lives. The objectives of the introduction of women's studies in universities therefore are to give men and women a knowledge of women's rights, to sensitize men and women about the prevailing discriminatory practices in society, which prevent women from realizing their rights and participating fully in the social, political and economic processes in the country. To counter all forms of reactionary processes for looking at society from the viewpoint of gender, it makes evident the aggressive social and political processes which create and reinforce other structures of inequality such as class and caste. To revitalize university education through women's studies, practice which goes beyond textbook knowledge to emphasize learning by doing. To update university education by incorporating new knowledge generated by women's studies research and learning. To promote interdisciplinary approaches to knowledge, cutting across disciplinary grids. To generate new knowledge through intense fieldwork experience so that a database be created about the lived experiences of women. So students, to summarize the chapter. Women's studies as an interdisciplinary subject's contribution to the whole of higher education with the objectives, contents and methods. Women's studies may be defined as a body of knowledge that has grown out of a felt concern for gender equality. Rooted in feminism, women's studies seeks to explain the socio-historical, cultural, economic and political reasons for women's subordination. Women's studies has its roots in the women's liberation movement of the 1960s. Increasingly integrated within the academia in the 1970s, the roots of the discipline lie in its critique of existing scholarship and the fundamental questions it raises about the accepted theories and methodologies. Identifying issues of power, women's studies helps to strengthen the discourse against all forms of inequality, injustice and oppression. With gender as a category of social analysis, women's studies attempts to correct the excessive androcentric tilt of the various disciplines. The discipline got its official sanction from the international community when based on the recommendation made at the World Conference held at Mexico during 1975. In India, the National Committee on the Status of Women was set up to examine the status of women in India and their problems. 